Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Rapid Response Run Podcast. I am happy to share my friend Sarah with you today because we are going to answer some questions that I get all the time in my DMs. So Sarah, welcome back to the Rapid Thank Response Run Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So glad to have you. So the questions that I hear all the time are basically, should I go to the ICU? Am I fit for the ICU? What should I expect from the ICU? Is the ICU scary? Do you think new grad? I mean, I could. I have a list of questions actually that I get that I want Sarah to answer. But Sarah really is the perfect person to answer these questions, not only because of your background but because of your heart for nurses. So, yeah. for those of you that haven't heard of Sarah Vance before, can you just walk us through like who you are and why you have your business, which is helping nurses understand critical care and love critical care again. Yes. So thank you, Sarah, again for having me. Um, So yeah, I'm Sarah. I am a critical care nurse educator. I've also been a critical care nurse for 14 years. I started as a new grad ICU nurse back in 2009. Um, I've been, been, (laughs) yeah, I've I've been there. I get it, right? Um, And I've been a formal educator in critical care for the last two and a half years. And during that time period, formally, I have trained many new grads. um, And informally, I was a preceptor for many new grads throughout my career going into the critical care areas. So on top of that, I do, I am the owner and founder of icunurse.com. So uh, see you like I actually visually see you. Um, It's a play on words for critical care, obviously, um, where I help empower new nurses coming into ICU, whether they're new grads or, you know, new nurses just new to ICU um, through education and mentorship. Yeah. So let's be honest, nursing school does not prepare you for the ICU. It definitely does not. And even orientation to the hospital yes. doesn't prepare for ICU. There's so much to learn and grasp and wrap your head around it. So I'm so glad that nurses like you exist. Thank you. All right. So let's dive into some, some yes, questions. Let's. The first one is, would you recommend going straight into the ICU at a nursing school? So here's the thing with this question. <laughs> I feel like, number one, it's very controversial, okay, because people have very strong opinions about it. And that's because a lot of those opinions operate in extremes. And what I will say is I will never tell someone not to do something that they truly want to do. If they have their heart set on being a critical care nurse, then I'm always going to support them in doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But it's not for everybody. So... Everyone wants this like clear black and white answer. And it's really a, it depends. Mm -hmm. It really just depends. Depends on the person, depends on the area, depends on the support from the hospital, depends on many factors Mm -hmm. involved into should they or should they not. Mm -hmm. Uh, But like I said, I'll always say if that's something that somebody wants to do, I will always support that. And I am a testament to that. And many of the people that I work with are also a testament to that, that it is possible for new grads to be successful in an, in an ICU. And I work in a very high acuity ICU. So um, it's definitely possible. Yeah, I agree. And it's not just like the person and how they're wired, but also like, where are they in life? Yes. You know, like, are they ready to just drink out of a fire hydrant right. and also have to learn ICU? Or do they need to take a break after nursing school and say tend to an aging parent who's now ill? Maybe if you have a lot going on in your personal life, it's not the time to dive into ICU and learning all of that. Or uh, maybe if you're just like burn out on nursing school, maybe take a break and really like slowly ease into the nursing world rather than like diving head first. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, there's so many factors. I don't think we can say a black and white. I agree 100%. All right. How do I know if ICU nursing will be a good fit for me? What types of people do well in the ICU and what types of people struggle in the ICU? So it kind of, you had a great segue into the conversation, right? So it depends. I think there's more conversations that need to happen about what's going on with you as a person, because that's going to influence your success. So what type of people are successful? Usually individuals that pick up things very quickly, because you're going to have to, people that take initiative into their own learning, Um, individuals that are okay with a little bit of chaos. Typically, ICU nurses are quite organized. So a little bit, you know, organized in that degree, detail oriented also as a component. Um, And how well do you deal with stress, which is one of those things where it's like, if you have a lot of stressors going on in your life right now, 
this might not be a good time for you to go and be a new ICU nurse because it's going to be difficult and it's going to be stressful. Even in the most perfect orientation, the most support that you can have, it is a it's a transition where you're starting to deal with things that morally, ethically, you're learning a whole bunch. It's a lot. Um, so really looking within yourself and asking yourself, is this a good time for me to go into that area? So um, outside of that, what when people struggle, I think it's individuals that do have stuff going on in their life um, that are not investing into their own learning um, and that have a need a little bit more space to pick up to pick up things. And all of that is OK. Like there's not a right way to learn. And so if you have to take a moment for yourself as a person mm -hmm. after nursing school or after whatever, that's totally fine. Like critical care is going to exist. Mm -hmm. This is now your profession. You have your entire career. Yes, thank you. So like you don't have to rush into yes. it, but if you want to, that's fine too. So being honest with yourself, I think number one, um, but it's all okay. If you need some time and space, you pick up things a little bit slower, it may be more beneficial to work on those skills in another unit. Because when you're a new grad in the ICU, you're learning a whole bunch of skills. And skills is actually the easier portion to pick up. It's the critical thinking, it is the prioritization, it is the time management, it is the moral and ethical dilemmas that we deal with. It is learning how to navigate hard situations in a variety of personalities that are, are professional personalities, but also family dynamics as well. So there's a lot involved with it. Mm -hmm. The skills portion is actually very easy, but if you need some time to just get your skills down and like basic time management, prioritization, some pathophys, mm -hmm. some routine meds that you are going to see throughout all areas, then do that and then come and really tackle the heavier portion of like, okay, now we're taking things up a notch. And there's this whole beast that we have to now learn. Yeah. I agree. So I've never been an ICU educator, but I worked as the ER educator. And I think all those, that wisdom you just shared applies to the ER as well. Like I would get both new grads and just new to ICU mm -hmm. nurses that have worked med surge or other areas. And in my experience, the ones that came from the med surge areas, they actually had an easier time orienting because some of that foundational stuff, they'd already got that down pat. They could pass meds, they could do quick assessments, they could handle families. Some of those skill sets that you don't think of being like you must have that to be IC. Yeah, yeah, you need all that stuff too. And so it just helps you build upon that. Whereas so my new grads, they did eventually get it. But man, you could just see the overwhelm initially mm -hmm. because they didn't teach me any of this in nursing right. school. Is what I, I heard that phrase so many times. And they don't. Right? I mean, let's be honest. They, right. they don't. Yeah, not even like... Like remotely, like a drop of information, like nothing. Like I've never heard of this word before, never heard of this procedure before. Like it's all brand new, which makes it exciting, but also makes it challenging, right? right. So, But there's unique challenges that come from having someone come from the floor to the unit as well. So true. I've seen that too. I mean, being on critical care, time management and prioritization is very, very different than other areas, just like the ER, completely different mm -hmm. than critical care or any type of inpatient area. And, and inpatient floors and units are very different than critical care. So sometimes people that start out in, um, say, like med surge or something like that, telemetry, even PCU, they when they come to ICU, sometimes their biggest struggle isn't, I can pass meds, I can document, it is, I have to unlearn my time management that I did once learn mm -hmm. and unlearn my prior prioritization and relearn how I'm going to do that that as an ICU nurse. So, you know, there's challenges to both sides. So like I said, it's not a black and white answer. It's a gray area that exists. For sure. For sure. All right. Here's another question I got. I just passed the NCLEX and I was hired in the ICU. What can I do to prepare myself for my new job? Yeah. So first and <laughs> foremost, become very familiar with me because this is like what I do. It's my specialty. <laughs> I take all those concepts and make them make sense in a very easy and fun fashion. Um, but one thing that I think is there's some standard stuff that you have to know as a critical care nurse. So understand how to analyze an ABG. So some things you just have to memorize, unfortunately. ABG analysis, that you just have to 
remember the normal values and how to interpret it. Yeah. Also, it won't just come to you. Like you're going to have to stare at yeah. that at multiple ABGs <laughs> yes, to really grab yes. your head around them. <laughs> but if you understand how to interpret them, then you can start to apply it to what you're seeing for your patients. Mm -hmm. So work on interpreting first, and then you'll be one step ahead when you get in there and you're like, oh, metabolic acidosis, I already can see that. This is how it's applying to my patient. This is why our treatment is what it is. This is why they're presenting the way it is right. versus having to learn the interpretation and that all at once. Right. So learning that, um, cause you're going to see it regardless of what type of critical care area you work in, um, learning the big drugs that we use. So I like to say the big four vasoactive medications, and that's in one of my resources. It's, you know, the big, uh, Levo, Epi, Vaso, and Neo. Those are the big four that are common across the board. We use them in very different areas and, um, different doses, depending on what you're working in. Um, Having some familiarity, I think, with, you know, different types of O2 delivery devices can also help. But really, this all comes down to you got to invest in your own self and your own learning, because um, not all of it's going to happen in your orientation, your preceptorship. And it is a continuous learning. Like, I've been doing this for 14 years, and I learn something every single day. We were just talking about that earlier, weren't we? <laughs> like, like, wait, we got to Google this yeah, together. <laughs> yeah, so like, it's, it's a continuous process. So the more that you invest in the beginning, you're just going to be one step ahead. So ABGs, drugs, O2 delivery devices, I would say. Oh, I do want to add, though, one other thing that I think in order to s set up yourself for success, and I s talk to my new grads about this all the time, get a self-care plan in place ahead of time, because mm -hmm. you're going to have to rely on that at some point. How are you going to cope? How are you going to manage when you have really tough assignments? How are you going to be okay? Um, and also, who is your support system? So... You might think, well, that how is that, like, how does that add to this conversation? Because sometimes your support system is what's going to get you through those moments because ICU is, we have some really amazing situations like our podcast, what was that, episode 76, right? Mm -hmm. 76, an amazing outcome, right? But sometimes we don't. And sometimes it's hard. And so you're going to need your support system and you need to know how to fill your cut back up in those moments. So I would say get those plans in place early on. So you have them before it is, you absolutely have to do it for your own self. I agree so much, Sarah. I wish someone had told me that when I was new. because so I just thought my desire to help would just carry me through anything. Mm -hmm. But I needed to, in order to help all those patients, I had to have processed the hard stuff myself and had a, a way to do that. Yeah. You know, nothing prepares you for how much tragedy and grief and anxiety and like you're going to be like in, inundated with it from your patients and their families like you're constantly around that so if you haven't gotten used to dealing with all that it's 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 a difficult transition so i agree find your people go ahead and find your therapist yep. <laughs> go ahead yep. get everything in place before you are thrown right in to dealing with not dealing with having the opportunity to care for patients and families who are in crisis on the mm -hmm. worst day of their life you know freaking out and you had to be that like solid guiding light for yeah. all these patients and families or I try mean. to be because it's hard to be yes. yeah i've definitely shed some tears on the job yes, me too. i'm above that for sure yep all right what are the most common struggles of nurses in the icu and what are some of the things that you can do to mitigate those challenges so some of the struggles that I see is plain overwhelm, right? Because it's just a lot. So just like, I don't know how I'm ever going to get there. Um, when new grads come to the ICU, one thing that I always hear them say is, I feel stupid or I feel dumb. And the statement that I always say to that is, you are neither, you are just inexperienced. That's all. The only thing that's different between you and I is I've been doing this longer than you. That doesn't mean that you cannot be me. And that doesn't mean that I am not learning too. There's some stuff that I don't know. Um, and we all help each other out in that sense. But it's really the mental component 
of how do I deal with imposter syndrome? How do I deal with my confidence? Because there's that's a whole nother situation. How do I develop my voice to advocate for my patients? How do I develop my voice to speak up during rounds? How do I develop my voice to, you know, against my coworkers that I'm working with? If I need to say, hey, you know what, why don't we do this? Or how do I ask for help when I need help? Um, how do I make sure that I can, you know, feel good asking questions. So those are usually the issues that I see with just overwhelm, confidence and imposter syndrome. And then of course, a struggle that happens at times is the first time that you have a patient death. Mm. The first time that you have a situation where your or your morals and ethics are, you know, you're you're feeling some conflict inside. Usually the first time is the hardest, I will say that. Um, and again, that's why you got to rely on your support system and have good self-care and your colleagues, because mm -hmm. the reality is that nobody gets it besides another nurse, yeah. you know, that is there with you. Um, and then there are some things like time management and prioritization, but that comes with that. That's ever evolving, mm -hmm. but it's usually those larger subjects that I like to focus on. I like to teach nurses about how to be a critical care nurse. This is the path of phys. This is how you do it. But let's also talk about the stuff that's difficult. That is our mindset and how we move and exist in this type of yeah. type of space. Yeah, I agree. I wanted to add one thing to that. I get asked a lot myself, like, how did you know what to say to that doctor? Or like, how did you handle that with such confidence? Or when you had a disagreement with a colleague or with a physician, like, how did you handle that? So I want people to know that 19 year old Sarah, when I was a new grad, did not handle it the same yeah. as 39 year old Sarah, who's doing it today. And I think how I developed that skill set to quickly and confident, confidently respond to challenges, like, uh, like social challenges and advocacy challenges, is that I messed up the first time. The first time I tried to call a doctor, the first time I tried to handle someone I disagreed with or, you know, be tough with the patient or family. The first time I did that, I probably did not do it the best. And I would go home and be like, oh, I wish I would have said this or, oh, why did I say that? Or I should have worded it this way. Like, I feel so stupid. I feel so young. I feel so inexperienced. But instead, I just, I hadn't tried that before. Mm -hmm. I've never had to argue with someone about what's best for my patient. Right? Mm -hmm. I've never had to do that before. And so in those times when I was reflecting, I'm like, well, next time I want to say this. If I could do that again, I would say it this way instead. And instead of leading with this, I would lead with that. You know, I, I want to make sure I use this word. And with time, I have got my chance again. Yeah. That same scenario has repeated itself. That same need Many to times, stand up and I'm advocate. Sure. Yeah. And so now when it happens again, I have almost like not a script, but kind of like I'm ready right. for whatever. Almost like a sports player practices the same swing, the same jump, the same mm -hmm. kick. Multiple times you get good at it. It's the same way with nursing. <laughs> you practice how to communicate in the way that you want. Um, and again, that has to go hand in hand with your clinical foundation. Yeah. So it's not just like I have the confidence. Confident people that don't know their stuff, that's right. a real bad recipe yes, for that's disaster. scary, right? Yeah. <laughs> but people who are confident and competent, like you right. actually know what you're talking about, that has carried me and my patients in a lot of difficult circumstances. And so if you feel like, oh, gosh, I bombed that one, that's okay. That was your practice yeah. run. It's going to happen again. You're going to get a second chance, yeah. and then you'll be ready for it. And the thing, too, is like you're going to make mistakes, right? I've made a mistake. Yep. You made a mistake? Oh, that's several. <laughs> I guarantee every single nurse that you will talk to will make a mistake. And yeah. if they say they haven't, they either haven't been practicing long enough or, or they don't. Aware. They're not self-aware <laughs> or they don't know the mistake that they made because everyone has made an error to some degree. Yeah. And so we take those moments and we can learn from them. And whether it's small, whether it's medication or we miss something or communication tactics, whatever it is. But one thing that you said there is practice. And so you reflect on it, you become more knowledgeable. Well, why did I miss that? Why, why didn't I understand this? Why wasn't this person listening to me? And understand it whether it's pathophys or whatever, and then try again yeah, and try again. And also sometimes it, you may need a little like somebody in your corner being like, you got this, like you really <laughs> do because you do, like you got this, you can do it, you can do it. Um, and talking to those people, having really good mentors in your life. Yeah. So 
just a funny story. When I was the ER educator, I walked to the nurse's station to get something. And there was one of my new grads standing in front of like the doctor's documentation area, just kind of like looking down and taking deep breaths. And I was like, hey, you doing okay? What, what you doing? She's like, I'm just preparing myself to go talk to Dr. Bubba about my patient that I disagree with the medication that he wrote. And I was like, okay, all right, well, well what are you gonna say? And she like gave me her plan. I was like, that sounds great. You go on in there. I'm gonna stand right here. Yeah. Okay. And you, I'm just gonna watch. But I know you got this. And she totally nailed it. Yeah. But I'm sure she's not still doing that. That was five years ago. Mm-hmm. Now she's like, I've done this so many times, and mm-hmm. now I can do it. But I remember her first time. She was so scared. And I was there too. Right. We've all been there. Yeah. All right. Um, what wisdom or encouragements do you have for new ICU nurses? So I think it takes a lot of patience with mm-hmm. yourself. One thing that I notice is that new grads come in and they have these unrealistic expectations. They think that I should be operating here. Right. And you're using comparison against other people to see where you think you should be. And it's unrealistic most of the time. Like, you're new. You're not supposed to know any of this. Also, nursing school did not teach you any of this stuff. So realizing that you need to check your expectations, I think is something that we have to remember (laughs) to do as well, which is hard. Um, And try your best not to compare yourself to other people that have been doing this for any length of time. I mean, a new grad day zero compared to a new grad day 30, that is even, that's a very short amount of time if you think of an entire career. But even that short amount of time, there's a big difference in that. Um, So be patient. Good. Manage your expectations, take care of yourself, get your plan in place, and invest into your own education. You have to be invested because yeah. you're not going to learn it all. But learning also, it's a balance, right? Because it's like you need to take a break for your brain and so you don't get burnt out, but also continue to learn baby steps. Um, ask questions always. There's no dumb question. The only dumb question is a question you didn't ask. No matter how many times it takes you to ask that question, ask it anyway, because that will bite you in the butt. Let me tell you, if you don't (laughs) ask, that's when you'll learn some of your lessons and be like, oh, I wish I would ask that question. So um, ask your questions and then get your support system in place. That's good. Be patient. And you got this. Yes. You do got it. I'm I'm a testament to that. I know many others that are a testament to that. Um, so you can do it. It's just, it's hard, but you can do it. You can do it. I agree. Sarah, this is all such good wisdom that I wish someone had given me as a new grad. So good. Before I let you go, can you just tell everyone where to find you? If they wanted to learn more about you or learn from you, where yeah. can they find you? So my website is icunurse.com and it is S-E-E for ICU nurse because it is like, I see, I, I get what you're going through. You know, I get it. Um, and my that's all my social media as well, which will be linked on my website. Awesome. It's where all my resources are. You can find all of it. So, And you should. You should go find all of it. <laughs> all right. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Thank and you, for Sarah. your wisdom and experience sharing with my listeners, I'm sure. I'm sure those that are wanting to see you are like, yes, this is exactly what I need to do. Yeah. You got it. You got it. You got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>